Hi kids, it's Pastor Pappy again with our Tuesday morning Bible study. In today's Bible story, we're going to take a trip to a construction site. Our Bible story is going to be part of a major building project. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I look at something being built, it doesn't make sense to me. I can't see or visualize what it's going to look like when it's done. How can just a couple of beams coming out of the dirt ever become a three-story hotel? But it can. There are plans and a bunch of different pieces, but if you trust the process, everything turns out okay. The same way in our lives. We don't always know what the end's going to look like, but God does. I can hardly wait to tell you this Bible story, but first, let's check in with Dash and Carrington and see what they're up to. Challenge accepted! Okay, should we just read the challenge card? Oh, sure thing. Today's challenge is called Truth Trust. For this challenge, one person will be hooked up to a lie detector machine while the other person reads them questions. If they answer truthfully, nothing happens. If they lie, the other person will be shocked. Wait, I think you misread that. What do you mean? So if you tell a lie, I get shocked? That's what the card says. You're telling me if you tell the lie, I'm getting shocked. That's why it's called truth trust. You have to trust me that I'll tell the truth. But I don't trust you. What? Why not? You told me yesterday that you could hold your breath for 30 minutes. I can! Nobody can hold their breath that long. <gasps> I did it while I was sleeping. You know what? It doesn't matter. Just promise me you'll tell the truth. I'll try, but I'll probably mess up some. Truth test? Challenge accepted. What is this thing? Uh, it says it's a lie detector, but it looks more like a computer from the 1950s. You mean like the 1850s? Okay, well, I need to hook this part up to me. Can I put this part over here? Just promise me you're gonna tell the truth. I got this. Okay, question one. What is your name? Dash. Ah! Oh, wait, 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 I'm so sorry. My real name is Graciano, but everybody calls me Dash, so that's just what I said. I'm sorry. Okay, next question. Do you sleep with the teddy bear? Uh, of course not. No! Okay, maybe I do. I'm sorry. I can't trust you for anything. <sighs> Please give me one more chance. Let me think about it. In today's Bible story, you're going to hear about a guy named Nehemiah who had to trust God with something massive. And that Bible story is in the book of Nehemiah. Today we're going to learn that God wants me to trust him through Nehemiah's life. Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king of Persia. That means the king trusted Nehemiah with his life. The cupbearer held a respected position because he made sure that the drinks that were served at the royal table were safe. See, back in those days, kings could have a lot of enemies and one way to kill the king was to poison him with a drink. Nehemiah was responsible to make sure that that never happened. Sometimes he had to put his life on the line by trying the drink before the king drank it. Nehemiah was in the king's winter palace in Susa, which was about 900 miles from Jerusalem. He'd heard from one of his brothers how badly the city gates and walls needed to be repaired. Nehemiah's heart was broken. He cried and he went without eating for days because Jerusalem was in ruins. Nehemiah may have never even been to Jerusalem, but God was working on Nehemiah's heart because God had a special job for Nehemiah to do. It was months later, Nehemiah was again in the king's presence, but he was still upset. That's a long time to be upset. It was obvious to the king, so he asked Nehemiah, why are you upset? Nehemiah was kind of scared. He explained how Jerusalem was destroyed, but he knew he could have been in trouble with the king for just being sad in his presence. But instead of being mad, the king asked how he could help Nehemiah. He even gave Nehemiah time off. He gave him some letters to help him on the journey and all the supplies that he needed to rebuild the wall. Nehemiah set off to Jerusalem with the blessing of the king. The king sent along soldiers to protect Nehemiah and those who traveled with him. The 900 mile journey to Jerusalem, it probably took them several months. 
And when Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem, he didn't tell anyone what he was doing there for three days. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 tell us why. So I arrived in Jerusalem. Three days later, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few men with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us except the donkey I was riding. Nehemiah quietly traveled around the city to look it over. He found a broken wall, burned gates, and rubble so deep he couldn't even get over it with his donkey. Then he went back to the city to talk to the leaders. And this is what he said. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed. Let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then Nehemiah told the people of the city about how the king had given him the blessing and the supplies to rebuild the wall. And the people were so excited, they cheered and they shouted. They were happy to rebuild the wall. But not everyone. A few people didn't want the wall rebuilt. Those were people who were not God's people. They wanted to stop what was happening. They accused Nehemiah of going against the king. And they didn't like Nehemiah telling people what to do. Who did he think he was being in charge? The task in front of Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem, it was huge. It seemed like it was impossible. But Nehemiah trusted God. He was so confident that God would help them that he told his critics that the God of heaven would help them succeed. Nehemiah had challenges along the way. There were times that his life was threatened. At times, the people had to build using only one hand while their other hand held a weapon. They worked hard, and in 52 days, the wall was completely done. No one expected that. And even though their enemies wanted to stop them, they trusted God. Can you ride a bike? <sighs> yes. Without training wheels? Y no. Have you ever taken a pie crust, filled it with mud, and told someone you made them a chocolate pie? Yes, but it was only one time! I knew it was you! <sighs> I can't trust you at all! I'm so sorry, these questions are really hard. Yeah, it's easy to trust someone when times are good, but it's when things get hard that you can really tell who is trustworthy. It kind of reminds me of today's Bible story. God had something huge he wanted Nehemiah to do, rebuild the walls of the city. It was a really big task and God knew Nehemiah couldn't do it on his own. God wanted Nehemiah to trust him to make the way and get the project done. And Nehemiah did. With God's help, Nehemiah and the people rebuilt the city walls in record time. Wow, God really wanted Nehemiah to trust him, didn't he? Do you think God wants me to trust him too? Absolutely, God wants you to trust him with every area of your life. Wait, God wants me to trust him with everything? Yep. Now, when you say everything, you mean everything, everything. He wants you to trust him with your school, with your work, with your family, with your pet, with your money, with your future. If you trust God, I promise he will come through. <sighs> that is super cool. Today, our challenge for you is to think of something you need help with. Then pray and tell God that you are trusting him for his help. Nehemiah had to trust God when he prayed, when he went to the king and when he asked for supplies. There's tons of times he had to trust God. For sure. Remember to talk to God about needing his help with something and then trust him to help you. Hey, I have an idea. What if we switch the roles and I ask you the questions this time? What if we just end the show here? Okay. Well, we'll see you next time here at Challenge, Challenge Accepted. Accepted.